I'm delighted today to be speaking to Anne Klein, who is the Solutions Head for the Fiduciary Advice at FMB and RMB. We're here today at the Radisson Hotel in Johannesburg. Welcome, Anne. Thank you so much, David. So terrific to talk to you today. We're going to talk a little bit about legacy in the context of succession planning. But before we get into that, it'd be great to hear a little bit more about you and your role in the company. Thank you. I'm an attorney and I've been in the industry for many years. Started out um, when we were still using typewriters <laughs> and we now in, in a more advanced age. Um, and with my current role, I look after a number of specialists where we support the clients to plan for their legacies. Terrific. And that giving journey is something that advisors are often working with clients on to help them, guide them to, yes. to start that conversation. And how do you go about having those initial conversations with clients? It's always interesting to spend time with clients. So we use our time to understand the client and what it is that the client would need. Mm. We also um, spend time understanding their vision, their mission, mm. their values, and just unpacking it through conversations, bringing in the right skills, and bringing in the specialist we needed. I mean, on this point of legacy, do you think it's important for families to tell the story of how wealth was created, to create meaning for those in the current generation and, and, and future generations? We love capturing those stories mm. through the conversations and we encourage the clients to capture the stories. What we've seen, it also helps um, the families and it guides them in terms of their decisions into the future. Mm. And it does connect the generations, the current and the next generations and more generations to come. Do you think it helps them define their values, you know, what the family stands for and what, you know, and if they face challenges in the past, learning from those challenges and applying them into the future. You know, there's difficulties in every generation. How did previous generations overcome them? Can be valuable learnings, can't they? It's valuable for families, definitely. And it also encourages the next generation to take different decisions mm. or where there are difficult decisions to be made. You have a sort of a, a compass or a guidance document that you can use and to take the family forward mm. and to even for new joiners into the family once you understand the values of the family if you join the family then it just makes it a little bit easier for you as a new joiner. Mm. Do you find that those value sets are kind of written down and codified in family charts? I mean a lot is a lot is said to me about advisors, particularly say in regions like the Middle East, where they go, actually, the formal documentation of the family charter is useful when looking at structuring as well in philanthropic, but also in, in business assets to try and give some set of, set of values. Definitely. The yeah. family charter guides the family, but it also helps the advisors because it, it creates an opportunity where everyone can spend time looking at different aspects. Every person gets a voice. The family members become engaged. And uh, it's a more proactive approach. It also captures the story, like we said, for, for future generations. Um, so it's an amazing way to um, take families forward, mm. not only in terms of pure wealth, but also, like you said, in terms of really understanding why things are like they are, where or you know, what's the next steps and what's the future for for that family, um, when they make decis decisions, why do they make the decisions mm. like they are making them and so forth. So it's a very valuable document for families um, to have. And, and for business families, we've also seen examples like Patagonia in the US yes. where shares were donated into charitable structure. Are you seeing increasingly entrepreneurs of, of ultra high net worth families looking at how they can also incorporate business assets into these legacy and charitable structures. Definitely yeah. the business is part of what needs to be achieved and yeah. a lot of business people um, had lots of successes in certain communities and they want to give back to those communities and they want to achieve more. So it's definitely part of the discussions. Mm. It's the wealth board, the business board and um, there's a lot more to it than simply not using your wealth purposefully. Mm. So you need to understand what's the actual purpose for the family and bringing the business aspects into it. 
And that's a nice way for the next generation to understand certain drills in terms of um, governance mm. and how to serve on a board and so forth. So we are definitely seeing changes where um, philanthropy is being used to have different types of discussions with different generations. It can be a little a training ground, if you like, for people to get used to administering legal entities which need serious governance, decision making. Is that is that something you see being utilised and put into practice? Definitely, yeah. and it gets everybody involved. So mm. from the youngest person in the family to um, the next gen um, moving into something else, maybe. So it's it's a topic that that um, can be discussed at the dinner tables. I mean, tax is part of the picture with this kind of planning. I mean, what what kind of tax incentives exist to make philanthropic donations? Why does it make sense from a tax perspective? Tax is always a topic that comes up, although um, you know it's not the, the driving force. Mm. There are definitely incentives, and our legislation also guides us in terms of that. And we have, you know, we always on the lookout for certain tools. And um, although we don't give um, tax advice, we get the right advisors in to assist the clients to get to the right answers in terms of always, you know, giving in a way that makes sense from a planning point of view. And, and do you see those assets being invested once they're in a structure, if they then go into a portfolio? I mean, the, the considerations are given to like ESG considerations or impact. What, once people have determined that legacy is important to them, do you find that they invest perhaps in different ways? What we have seen is people don't um, only look at one way of doing things. And I think mm. in terms of where the world is, and because of the next generation, they're active agents of change. And, and you know, there's a lot of information available, so you can quickly um, look at information, become a bit of an expert, but the wisdom sometimes needs to follow, and that's where we, um, as a financial institution, will bring the experts in and give different options. So um, the pure act of giving, I think that has changed. Mm. People are doing different things um, in terms of making a difference that's more, maybe might be more impactful or in line with the visions for, for their family. Because there's many ways to express your objectives for impact and ESG investment, isn't it? It's not as if you pull something off the shelf and that's the solution for each client. Is It's about a bespoke investment solution that reflects their objectives. So I guess if they do the groundwork on purpose, on their purpose and the family purpose, yes. that must help inform then other decisions down the chain. If you, It's not to rush those early stages, I guess, of setting out the vision. That's exactly that. So people need to understand what the purpose of their wealth is and they'll unpack it, they'll reflect on it and they'll get the advisors. And what is amazing about what we do these days is you can actually get a specialist in and they can, they can guide the client, but the client will already have a very good idea in terms of what they wish to achieve. And how important is incorporating social legacy into the family's vision? It's extremely important because I think we've all seen um, in terms of what's happening in the world, 1.1 uh, billion children are now living um, below the poverty line. So I think mm. uh, none of us can ignore the fact that more needs to be done. Mm. And having um, advisors and people surrounding you um, to make a difference will actually really assist um, not only the families, in terms of your social legacy, it will actually um, assist the world that your children need to live mm. in. So mm. it's a much wider concept than only the family, the business, and, and the business owner. It's making sure that the next generation will have a better world to live in. Yeah, because if, if you're living in a country which is broken down through yeah. inequality or the most basic infrastructure is not in place, yes. it doesn't matter how much money you've got in your bank account, you're not going to be able to live a nice lifestyle, isn't it? I think that bigger picture now is becoming very clear, isn't it, I think, to, to wealth owners all around the world. Yes, that's exactly that. So um, what, what we've seen is, and from our discussions with some of the charities that we work with, mm. um, there are realities um, in the world and those charities are close to those realities. And for stakeholders and for um, business people, um, I think it will be good for them to engage with different um, areas um, in terms of um, the legacy planning just to see where they want to make the biggest impact. Mm. And how can families create that sustainable change? So do something with a focus, not just 
make a, a donation, a gift to a cause that appeals? How do they how do they translate it more into more impactful over a more sustained period? What we've seen is people actually want to know what the funds are being used for, and mm. they want to see the changes that they're making. There are all ways to track. And what they are doing and the impact that the funds are having and then you get people who are involved in these projects who are not that concerned and they realize that they might just have to trust the charity that they're giving the funds to um, but there's definitely uh, it's important to keep track of where you're going how you utilize the funds which project projects you get involved in and uh, what we do is we assist the clients um, with the tracking, with the reporting, with all mm. the compliance issues um, that they don't always find the time for. So that's mm. where our advisory teams can come in and assist them. So you might do some due diligence on a project to make sure that it, it receives the funds and deploys those properly and things like that. Or you, what would your role be in, in doing that bit of support? <laughs> Yes, so the F&B Philanthropy Centre does all of that. Mm. We can do research for you, we can do the implementation mm. for you, we can do the, the management of the funds for you, so it's a variety of things that we can do. And what's good about it is it's in a secure environment where we have the teams to support that and make sure that you know you remain compliant. Mm. So the, that research piece might be a client saying, I'd like to solve this problem. What's the best way to do it? Is that fair? Uh, would that, might that be a way they could approach a challenge that they're trying to solve? That's exactly that. Okay, and then right. we actually like working with the community. So we would mm. sit down with the community because that's why we're doing the work is to understand the communities that we need to solve for or where we need to work with them. And it's, um, you know, what we've seen is once you get the communities involved, the impact is more um, great. Do you think like the very largest global foundations like Bill and Melinda Gates having a, like a venture philanthropy approach, i.e., you know, like looking at what problems to solve, how to do it, and your efficiency actually inspires more people to do it and to operate in that way, so not just to make passive donations, but actually to, seek the, to take a more of a businessman's lens on a problem and seek to solve it does yeah. de definitely support, um, I think, because we now have mega philanthropists, it does make all of us aware that each one of us can be active in mm. terms of changing things. Mm. So those um, foundations actually do um, lead um, in terms of what needs to happen. And we, uh, you know, in our country, have a, a, a number of um, families and they contributed quite a lot of funds um, during the COVID period mm. and that was actually um, in the mainstream uh, media and I think uh, it's more about um, recognizing sometimes there's an immediate need, other times there's a different approach. So we need all sorts of solutions for, for families and businesses. It might not just be one way of looking at it. Um, you, you could find that you might want to donate funds and say, I trust whoever gets these funds that they'll utilize it correctly. Mm. For families making that first step, wanting to actually, they've been thinking about this kind of like legacy planning, it appeals to them, the time is right now to, to take action. What are some of the first steps they should think about and, and immediately kind of try and put into place? Sure. I, I think first is to understand um, what's the difference between your heart and your mind. So where do you want to make a change? Where do you want to make a difference? Mm. Is it in connection or, or, or does it relate to, for example, the business that brought you certain successes? Are you passionate about something? Did something um, happen in your own life that maybe drives what you want to achieve? So. Uh, there are a number of things, but for client to firstly sit down, to look at things, to reflect on it, and then to decide as a family how they might want to proceed. So I think the first step is to see what it is that you wish to mm. achieve, what are your main um, topics that you want to, um, or even uh, in, in the sense that, you know, is there someone that you can work with, someone who's been through this? Mm. You know, maybe, um, and also you sometimes get it where people would first turn to their family to talk about these topics, but it's first to get an understanding mm. and then to take the next step to look at should you set up a new structure, can mm. you utilize an existing structure, or what is it that you wish to achieve? But the first thing is to understand your purpose and. 
And within, within a family, if you have across the generations, if it's not a clear actual uh, objective set, I, yeah. you know, do you sometimes help them clarify their thinking by almost mediating between what should be important? You know, it's, it's not, I imagine, always in the first take exact clarity on, on what the goals of the family should be, do you find? We do, we do. So we say we come in to balance the heart and the mind. Mm. A lot of um, these topics actually go into your heart space and you sometimes don't um, always um, utilize some of the knowledge that you might have. Mm. Um, Although, you know, if one look at it, um, th that's uh, most, of, most of the times why people start something is because they're passionate about it. So we as a professional advisory team come in, we look at all your structures, all your wealth, what it is that the family wish to achieve, and then we work on a plan for you and identify where the gaps or things that you might not see and to see the best business outcome for you as well. We, your business can also create an impact in the communities or the industry that they serve in. And I imagine you have to work collaboratively with other professionals, both in South Africa and potentially overseas, on some of these solutions. So do you find you, you're often working along the other side of the table from lawyers or uh, other fiduciaries or other, other wealth managers? I mean, how do you work? Which kind of professionals do you tend to collaborate with? It's a fascinating industry to be in because you do work with all sorts of professions and depending on the industry that the client is in, you know, you'll speak to the client's advisors as well. Mm. We work with attorneys, we work with um, accountants, um, with, um, you know, you have people sitting in different countries mm. that we have discussions with, we look at different trends. Um, and so it's, it is fascinating because you, you meet a lot of interesting people and through the work that that we're doing, um, I've just seen that I've met so many interesting individuals, people who are actually so passionate about making yeah. a change. And do you also then find charities that in your day to day, if you were working as a corporate lawyer or a private well, you might not come across actually some brilliant organizations and people dedicating their lives to yes. making things better. It must give, that must give you a good feeling when you know as well you're supporting those charities, working with clients. Yes, indeed. Yeah. When you work with, um, with the charities, you actually see how passionate people mm -hmm. are about making a difference. Um, and through the work that we're doing, um, the one organization that I'm quite involved with, or the you know, F&B, is one way we look after over 250,000 children per year. Wow. And it's amazing the work that they're doing, just to see how committed they are in mm. making a change in the lives of those children. And we can see that they are making a difference. And I think that's a huge um, reward for all of us mm. when you're close to these entities and you can see um, the structures that's in place, the governance that's in place, the funds are being utilized and everyone seems to work together. And we do find that where there's a gap in uh, a charity, for example, or a foundation, we are doing matchmaking mm -hmm. in, in that sense. So if, if there's a charity out there that's a good match for another, another charity, we, we can support them. And do you also find, I mean, environmental causes quite pressing climate change, you have the COP conferences. I mean, do you find that environmental causes also feature because people are experiencing and witnessing climate change and trying to do something about it? We definitely get involved in those topics. Mm. And it is something that's um, top of mind for a lot of the youngsters as well, and a lot of our clients. So it is a focus point. Fantastic. Well, look, Anne, great to talk to you today Thank about you. your work, and we look forward to sharing this interview. Thank you, David. The latest technical content delivered through global conversations with professionals for professionals.